What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little pass is a business. A dead meat. Hey everybody, welcome back to What's Your Favorite Scary Movie, the show where I talk to people about their favorite scary movies. My guest today is WWE superstar Xavier Woods. Hey man! Yes, hey, what's going on, man? Dude, finally, <laughs> finally we get to work together. <laughs> I'm so excited we get to do this. It's like, oh my god, we get to talk about scary movies. Let's go. Hell yeah, man. Uh, Cause yeah, we met at VidCon last year. I got to meet you at a meet and greet and we have some mutual friends too. So you knew of me when I was like, hey, I'm dead meat, uh, mark it out. So I wasn't too off putting, I hope. But no, no. yeah, I've, I've been wanting to work with you for so long cause you are a fellow YouTuber. Yes, sir, I am. For those of you who don't know me, uh, as you said so eloquently, I'm WWE superstar Xavier Woods aka one third of your boys the new, new day. day the greatest tag team on the face of the planet ever 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 also the host of the greatest youtube channel of all time up up down down lots of video games search for it subscribe help your boy out these are guns Unlimited ammunition. Also, twitch.tv slash Austin Creed. Because Austin Creed's the old wrestling name and the gamer tag. It's a thing. I got lots of names, but you just call me Austin Creed or Xavier Woods and I'll answer to them. Also, podcast every Monday, New Day podcast, search forever. Wherever you get your podcast, the New Day Feel the Power. Pink pictures would be like three black guys' faces. Click it. <laughs> you are a busy guy, man. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I want to be like you. Oh, oh, oh thank you. And I want to be like you. So. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Obviously, you got a lot going on, but I want to know what your history with the horror genre is, because you mm. just said you were excited to talk about it. So is it something that you've always watched? Is it something you got into later in life? I'm so excited. I've always loved horror movies. And what's weird is like, I'm super open about like my interest in obviously like video games and wrestling are my two like favorite things ever. And I'm very immersed into those worlds. And I'm sad that I haven't taken the proper time to be immersed into the horror world in order to like know people and, and get like insights on cool things but horror movies are, are I love them I love them <laughs> so much so the first one that I saw and I the only reason I remember this because I was finally old enough Child's Play that was my first scary movie but that's like the first like not kids movie that I ever saw and for whatever reason my dad or cousins and uncles were just like yeah you can watch it it's fine and then I was terrified of that doll because my friend had like a replica one and whenever I saw it I would like freak out I, I'd freeze in the hallway like because and they knew it messed with me so they'd put it in places and i just i couldn't handle it Stop. Fuck with the Chuck. That gave me a whole aversion to like porcelain dolls and I was terrified of <laughs> those things for a while. I like simulated fear. Yeah. So I, I like feeling like, oh my God, this is the scariest thing ever and I'm gonna die, but not really. So do you like roller coasters too? I do love roller coasters. I don't like straight down drops because most people feel like, a, a you know, the pit, like your stomach moving around. Yeah. I feel that same thing, but a little bit lower on my body. So I really don't enjoy them. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say that I'm like a thrill seeker kind of person because obviously like wrestling's a big adrenaline junkie kind of thing, I guess, but I wouldn't go like skydiving and stuff like that. Oh, I just went skydiving. How was a couple it? A months ago. Dude, it was the best. I, <sighs> I think you should do it, man. It's real fun. I, it's I've the been... same kind of thing where it's like you, it, it's the simulated danger and obviously <laughs> there's more of a danger there. But like yeah. the thing that got me through it was that you go attached to someone, right? Mm -hmm. And the guy who I was attached to was like, yeah, this is like my fifth one today. Like it's just an everyday regular thing for them. And I was like, well, if they're doing like a dozen a day, then this isn't really, you know, it's this not be a fun. big deal for them. It's yeah. a lot of fun. <laughs> I just, it's just terrifying to me. I am a professional LARPer. I put on shiny pants and I fight my <laughs> friends in cities all around the world and it's the greatest form of art you will ever see ever. That's true. And that's one of the reasons that I like horror movies because you get to go to this world that is creepy and scary and you've got like monsters or you're working with like possessions or like historical, just like actual real stories of like horror and like such an amazing world. You can watch a movie like Evil Dead and it's just covered in fake blood, just like pints of it, just gallons everywhere. And then you can turn around and watch something like as 
as below is above or uh as be- uh so below as above something like that but you get it so something that's <laughs> that's a completely different vibe it's like there's not the fake blood you're going underground and like oh underneath the louvre what's there and it's like they're taking wrong turns in these corridors and being in these tight confined spaces and then you can turn around and watch something like the descent so like all three horror movies so they're in this one category then these crazy subcategories of like how you can be scared why you're scared and when you're scared and it's like i i just i love it i love that the descent is kind of the middle venn diagram circle of those yeah. two movies yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's underground but also covered in blood <laughs> yes <laughs> that's what I, was, I was trying to find the movies like um um which ones make sense <laughs> yeah no i got you i love the descent that's one of my favorites it's highly underrated but i asked people to pick their favorite horror movie hard question and i know that it might change day to day but for this episode you picked hostile yes yes i did and you also said that you had some uh last minute waffling about it right yeah so hostile i saw repeatedly in the theater oh in the theater too oh <laughs> god yes if you make a product that i can pay money for in hopes that i get a second version of that product i, I will see it as many times and i will always bring people to the gospel so i remember i was in college <laughs> i saw hostel and i said hmm who needs to see hostel everyone so i took <laughs> people one by one to see hostel in college and each time we'd come back and they would say why did you make me watch that yeah when i watch hostel the first thing i think of is oh this movie's for everyone <laughs> well i mean it's with the people that I hang out with. <laughs> sure, sure. With, with, with my circle. That's the kind of yeah. people that I run with. <laughs> but my, my waffling came about because many times I have had this argument with people that paranormal activity is one of the best horror movies ever. And it's one of like, it's one of the best like overall f- just movie franchises. I love it, man. It's so good. And I feel like people just like take a dump on it. It's like, oh, it's just the cheap, cheesy stuff getting pulled down the hall. It's like, all right, cool. You don't like it. Like, whatever. Go watch it. Like, <laughs> I-, I only like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 and Freddy, but I don't like Freddy versus Jason. And I don't want to see him in space. Like, man, just can, can we, can I watch the movie I want to? And you just go watch those if you like them so much. And they're great. And I love them too. But just let, let, let people enjoy their weird stuff and, and paranormal activity. So I did the same thing when I first saw that. I immediately ran and got my friend, pulled her out of bed and said, we got to go see paranormal activity. I'm actually kind of glad that you didn't go with paranormal activity because another guest I'm going to be talking to shows that movie. I'm not going to say who it was, but I'm glad you picked Hostel because this is a movie that I'm not intimately familiar with. I saw it back when it came out and I remember being like, that's a lot of boobs. Hey, go! that I didn't see it again until earlier today when I rewatched it for this episode. And I haven't covered it on my channel in any capacity. What? So I'm so excited to talk about it with you. Yeah, man, I don't know how I'm going to talk about that thing on a channel and try to have that video monetized because like <laughs> like every minute, there's either boobs or a body part getting cut off. And I'm like, YouTube's not going to like this. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably not, probably not. I think it's the first time that I really sat and like watched. Actually, that's a complete lie because like I referenced <laughs> earlier, I think it is Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 where the girl, has her hands nailed to that chair. Leatherface leaves and then she pulls her hands off Ooh, yeah. of the armrest and the nails go through them. Like the first time I saw that, I don't know what happened inside my soul, but I said, <laughs> I want to have that type of self-motivation in life. Okay. To okay. be able to pull my hands through these nails and then still deal with the pain. And so I think from that moment forward, any type of like torture in horror movies, it always instills some sort of, and this sounds so strange. It instills this like weird to hope in me like yes you're going through it now but can you survive and so i just love stuff like that so even when like saw came out i was like this man can you cut your or cut it off you can cut it off you can do it you can you gotta survive you got kids come on you can do it so like i don't i'm always like rooting for the person who's in those positions in that weird way it fires me up because i'm, I'm it, it hurts inside my body like seeing it's okay in hostile when he gets his achilles cut yeah through. makes sense in my brain because i tore my achilles in october and that's all I could think of. Just, yeah, you, you were the guy in hostel. Literally crawling on the ground, screaming in pain. But oh but stuff God. like that, it's like you see his, his Achilles come apart and then he's crawling on the floor and I'm like, he can't make it, but can he? Because he went through this pain. Yeah. He has to, he has to. And it's, I don't know, I really love that dynamic. That makes so much sense to me because I have a similar response to watching people in movies where they just have to survive. I always think of 127 hours. I'm like, yeah, I'd cut my arm off, man. Like if, if I was in that situation, I, I would do it. Like I want to live so bad that I'll do anything that is required of me. I totally get that appeal. The, 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 the cutting your own arm off stuff. I want to say like, oh, of course I would be able to do this. But like, I don't think I could. I don't I think I could. I don't know, man. You put your body through some shit. And Samuel 
from behind on Kevin Owens. Oh, and a kick to the face. It, it's funny with Hostel because the guy who gets his Achilles cut, I think Josh, you think he's the main character for a while because like it's kind of focused on him. And then he gets his throat slit halfway through and we shift to the other guy. And the other guy, thankfully, he gets to live. So you get to root him on and experience his triumph. But I do feel like he has it a little easier. I mean, he does get two fingers cut off and like a drill bandied about, but he makes it. And I'm like, yeah, I can, I can make that. I, I can do that one. I can lose the fingers. I'll, I'll talk to the weird guy in the locker room. It'll be fine. Yeah. Oh God, that American guy in the locker <laughs> yeah. room. He's so intense. What do, you, what, do you, what do you think I should do? Make it quick. Make it quick. Yes. Yeah, that's, no, fuck that shit. Fuck this two fucking American dude. I'm going fucking old school. The, the weirdest thing to me about the movie, and I guess it's it's one of the things that draws me to it, is I like when there's some semblance of like, this is probably happening. Cause I, I it's not something that I would ever think of. You know, my brain doesn't just go like, oh, there's probably people who have so much money and they've done all these things and now they want to go to a place like this. Like that's not a, that's not a thought in like a normal human's mind, you know? And so now I'm thinking like, oh my God, is there someone who's watching this like, oh, 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 uh, burn it down, burn it down. Shut Get it the down. paper shutters out, you know? And so there's a semblance of like, there's a possibility that this could be happening. And I have that same emotion with possessions and stuff like that. The so Conjuring came out. I remember watching it thinking like, okay, this might be, eh, okay, I'll watch it. And then you're like halfway through and you're like, oh, that's cool. And then they get to like the clap, clap stuff. The clap man, yeah. <laughs> hey, wanna play hide and clap? I was in, I was in like 300%, like scared the piss out of me. Yeah. Like I was like, okay, this, this is where I, where I want to be. That stuff, even in like that paranormal sense, like to me in my head, like I don't know what's existing in whatever dimensional plane that I can't experience. I don't know if something like this could actually happen. And so it freaks me out even more. And that's what I'm drawn to. I definitely buy into the possibility that the stuff in Hostel is going on somewhere in the world with yeah. rich people. There's so many rich people out there who probably get bored just just doing everyday normal person stuff because they have all that money, you know? Yeah. So why not kill a person? Business is so boring. Insane. And it would be the most terrible thing on the planet, but there's some there's some terrible people. Yeah, for sure. That's why it's so satisfying, I guess, to watch that guy escape and triumph in the end. Because, I mean, the guy's kind of a dick earlier on in the film. Do you see a single other person in here with a fucking fanny pack? All those guys are walking around acting like they own the place because they're Americans. I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of interesting subtext about, like, American <laughs> exceptionalism in there because yeah. there's just all these lines about like oh we're americans we have rights i am an american i got rights get your fuck out you yeah. fucking suck such ass bro you know, it kind of sets you up to dislike these guys because they're kind of assholes. Yeah. But then when he gets put in that situation, you can't help but root for him to get out of there. You've and then got to. I really like what Hostel does is after he escapes, it brings back everything that it introduced earlier in the film that kind of felt aimless at first. So you get the guy who first told them to go there and the women in the hostel who directed him there and the kid. And he keeps running into all these things. When he sees the people who were conspiring against him and he just floors that car and runs yeah, him over. Yeah. You're just like, yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> and their faces. <gasps> yeah. <Whoa! laughs> to see someone get caught, you know? Yeah. It, it's it's so satisfying. Oh, it's so great. And I think, yeah, that's another thing about Hostel that worked so well because it was a successful movie. He finds himself in this conspiracy with so many people having worked against him, including like the police. He sees law enforcement officers talking to other people and to have him triumph over them, I think is something that everyone who feels powerless in certain situations wants to see and imagine themselves as being able to overcome all these odds being put against them by all these forces. And yet he's able to succeed in the end. Once, once you realize this is a universe and there are many stories that can be had, I think that really allows you to sink your teeth into it because by the time you get to the end of the story and you understand everything that's going on with all the rich people paying in to, to kill people that they're like kidnapping from these hostels but then you realize, oh, everybody who has this, this weird tattoo is a part of this organization. Now I need to know more about this organization because this is just one story in this catalog of stories and now we can bring more to you. So I love those. I love those types of endings so much because then you can just 
go wherever you want in the next ones. Yeah, you get the satisfaction of the guy who you know getting out of there, but then you're right. Just like the next thought process is, oh, but there were other people who have it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, let's see if they can do it. Yeah. And I know that this does have two sequels. I know Eli Roth did the second one, and uh, I, I don't think he's a fan of the third, but I haven't <laughs> seen the sequels, I don't think. Maybe I've seen the second one a long time ago. Are you familiar with them, or has it been? I know I've watched Hostel 2, but it's been a long time. I don't remember, like, freaking out about it and like loving it but i might need to watch it again yeah what year was that second one do you hostel know? 2 came out in 2007 oh so right afterward because yeah hostel the first one was 2005 and these feel very bush era movies i mean they're so yeah. predicated on torture and just like graphic close-ups of these things happening that they feel very situated in that time period the one that freaked me out the most was when the girl is like having getting her face blowtorched the eye and her eye is hanging out and for her to keep going he just cut it off and the Dude. pus came out. The pus. When, when the pus came out the eye, I was like, ah! <gasps> like so gross. And but then it's like again in these situations, I was just trying to think like, <laughs> what what would I do? So like, okay, my my face is half burned, melting, my eyes hanging out. I felt my eyeball get cut off. Like, but there's so much stimulation. Like I'm probably in shock, not feeling anything at all. I'm just kind of moving forward with this person that's trying to save me. But then when she looks at herself in the mirror or in the window at the train station, and then just ends it it's like i personally when i watched it the first time i did not see that coming i was like they're all gonna get out even when i could see like oh she's gonna see herself and like freak out yeah. i didn't think that she would just jump in front of the train and then i think immediately to the guy like this guy just put in so much work to make sure you got out of here and you're gonna just end it like that? Yeah, that's actually the one thing where I'm like, wish that hadn't happened. Cause yeah. like, oh, so what? You look a little ugly. You've just been running around this whole time seeing fine, apparently. So yeah. hop on a train, go, you know, you get to wear an eye patch. You get to walk around like a pirate. That's fun. But I don't wanna be a pirate. And yeah, this is one of those movies where, you know, Saw is considered torture porn as well. But that first movie doesn't show that much. There's not that much gore. No. Hostile, oh man, mm -hmm. they are showing you close-ups of those fingers getting cut off of that leg getting cut off, of just all this stuff, close-up shots of it. Yes. And I think it just goes to show that at that time, audiences were like, okay, let's see it. They wanted to see it. I still do. That's that's my jam. Because yeah. I, I need to know <laughs> that he had his two fingers cut off. I need to know this man got his Achilles cut. I need to know she got her face blow torch. I need to know. So is torture porn like your favorite subgenre of horror? And I use that term loosely because I know that, you know, Eli Roth's not a fan of it, but those types of movies, the very graphic ones, are those the horror movies you're most drawn to? I would say so. I'd, I'd say those are the ones that get the most visceral reaction from me. And by visceral reaction, I mean that's when I'm like clenching my shirt like, <gasps> and I don't know, I don't normally feel like that a lot in my regular everyday life. So I guess I would say probably, so this is, this is weird because this is just the descent. So uh, <laughs> people in caves and tight places, anything where you're confined in like tight spaces, I don't like that because that makes my heart just race. I don't like spirit stuff. So like I'm drawn to watching it. It's just really interesting to me when stories are told well. I really enjoy like the way the Conjuring universe does it with like Annabelle, how every, everything has this very distinct tale that goes with it. And it's like, whether it's an amulet, whether it's a doll, whether it's an alarm clock, there's some sort of very specific possession story that goes with it. That stuff's really cool to me just because I, I like lore a lot. Yeah, and Hereditary does have that with Payman, who I think is an actual like being described in real life mm. and part of some belief systems. It's, it's always nice to have a movie where where you can look stuff up and dive deeper into it. Yeah, definitely. Where the experience doesn't just end after the credits start rolling. Yeah, it's nice. Something that kind of sticks with you, which, okay, so this is a weird story. So uh, my mom really liked horror movies as well. She likes horror movies as well. And so when I was a kid, we'd go and we were so excited, like beyond excited to see Blair Witch. And so when we watched it, it was done. And I'm whatever, like 11 or 12, whatever age I was. And I look at her and she looks at me and we're like, that was so bad. <laughs> And we had that thought the whole time. But then the next time my friends said, hey, let's go play in the creek. Oh, nah, nah, I'm okay. <laughs> and then one day my mom asked me, she's like, hey, how come I haven't seen you like playing around like in the woods or anything anymore? I, I had to like be honest with her. I was like, remember how we said Blair Witch was bad? She's like, yeah. And I was like, I think it really messed me up. I think it may have been really good. And she's like, what do you mean? I was like, I can't go in the woods. I'm even in the daytime. I'm very scared. I'm very scared of these trees now. She was like, kind of scared too, man. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we're like, I think I think Blair, which was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask if like your appraisal of it changed. Oh later. yeah, oh Sounds yeah. Sounds like it did right away. Hundred <laughs> percent. Do you believe in witchcraft? No. No. No, sir. Are you a religious man? Yep. Alrighty. One last thing. I don't know. I like to ask people if they have any favorite scenes or characters or lines because we've kind of been discussing the movie in general. Yes. Hostile that is. But does anything really stick out to you? Anything that you remember from your first viewing that has just always <laughs> stuck with you the entire time? Yes. Besides, uh, oh, what is it? Can it be my first trivia question to you about the movie? Okay, sure. We can move into that. I like to ask people uh, oh. <laughs> when we talk about their favorite horror movie to try to stump me with trivia questions. So I've asked you to come up with three trivia questions about Hostel, which you're probably gonna stump me on because like I said, I'm not super into this movie, but let's see what we got. Okay, so the first one, this is my favorite thing about the movie, just like character wise. Then this is a this is a fairly easy one, especially since you just watched it. Okay. What is Ollie's confirmation? Yeah, we're buddies oh, phrase. Shit. Oh man, it's so funny, and I was repeating <laughs> it when I watched the movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I won't give myself full credit, but can I have a hint, like how it starts? Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course, horse. My, of uh, course, my horse. Yeah, yeah. Of course, my horse. Yeah. Of course, my horse. <laughs> yeah, of course, my horse. Yeah, of course, my horse. I was watching it, and Chelsea, my fiance, was like, "That guy looks familiar. What else was he in?" And I looked him up. Nothing. <laughs> Literally, his one and only film credit is Ollie in Hostel, and Eli Roth like met him and wrote the part for him because he liked him, and that was it. That's so good. I'm so happy I shaved my balls. I think his Wikipedia starts off with like, so and so is an Icelandic actor. He stands six foot three inches tall. I'm like, that's your lead in your Wikipedia article. All right. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is this will be the softball. Okay. How many fingers does Paxton lose when he's being tortured? Okay, he loses two, and it's so sad when he tries to like hold on to them to maybe have reattached later yeah. and then they get scooped up and thrown away. <laughs> And at the end, when he takes the scalpel to the Dutch guy's fingers, I thought he was going to take those fingers and just, like, <laughs> try to get those attached. But no, he left them there. <laughs> yeah, in Hostel 2, it's just those two extra fingers. Like, slightly discolored fingers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, a little bit harder than the last one, but still okay. still lower on the scale. The, uh, the Dutchman. Yes. What did he always want to be? Oh, he wanted to be a surgeon. Why couldn't, couldn't he? Couldn't because his hands were shaky. Okay, there we go. There we go. I always wanted to be a surgeon but the boards would not pass me can you smile <laughs> cool i'll give myself two and a half points out of three. <laughs> <laughs> i think it's a great job thanks man <laughs> well yeah dude it was so great talking to you about hostile Again, a movie that I don't get to talk about that often. And uh, really, it was just awesome to talk to you in general. You're so charismatic everywhere, whether it's on the TV or on your YouTube channel or on the podcast. You're just a great, fun guy to talk to, man. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, uh, anytime you want to talk horror, just let me know. We'd love to have you on the podcast sometime and talk about either how wrestling and horror intersect, because there is a large oh, overlap on the fan yeah. bases, or yeah. like video games and horror, because I know that you're an expert on that topic as well. Yes, because people... Oh, People that love horror, I feel like understand it is not just something that is produced and magically just placed in front of you. I feel like people who are legit fans of horror are fans of the makeup. They're fans of the soundtrack. They are fans of the set. They are fans of everything that goes into the movie. I feel like, you know what? You know what? I'm going to make a bold claim. Ooh. I feel like extreme horror fans might be the most specifics based movie audience ever. And by, by specifics based, I mean that they actually like know and understand all of the things that go into making this genre, this genre. Like I feel like yeah. people who's, who rep action movies are like, yeah, explosions and karate fights. And this is awesome. And I'm that guy. I got yeah. Jackie Chan right there. I love action movies. They're fantastic. I was wondering who that was. <laughs> that's, that's Jackie. That's my man. But I feel like people who love horror, it's just, it's a, it's a different level. Like there are not action movies.
movie conventions. There are horror movie conventions. Why? Because there's so many subcultures in this culture of horror. But all of them who appreciate how it comes together can appreciate how wrestling comes together because it's what horrors does, except it happens three times, multiple, more than three times, almost every day of the week live. And we don't have time like TV and movies do to create these, these story arcs that like 15 people sit down in a room and make. Like wrestling fans can appreciate the level of it that goes into people that love horror and people that love horror can appreciate the wrestling fans that appreciate wrestling for the same reasons. And then that all goes into video games as well. Yeah, it's I think uh, support for that point is the fact that people like Tom Savini, a makeup artist, are huge celebrities in the horror fandom. Like he's a makeup artist. Like what other genre, except maybe sci-fi, they yeah. probably get pretty okay. into stuff. But yeah, to have these like so-called below the line crew members who are dealing with effects and stuff to have them be so well known and appreciated throughout the fandom that's part of the reason that i'm drawn to it you get uh, such a different level of appreciation across the board and not just for who society deems as like the main players exactly like in the horror culture you're definitely going to get a lot more love the, like the further quote unquote down the chain you work when the chain should actually be a flat plane that everyone's on equally because without this link then the whole chain breaks. So appreciate everybody is what we're trying to say, I guess. Appreciate everybody, man. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. And I also just love, uh, as a very passive person who is not violent at all, I love that I have these two interests where I can just enjoy fictionalized violence and <laughs> violence where people are intending not to hurt the other person. Yes. And yes. I'm like, yes, I can still root for that. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't mean it. He really, we may have broke his arm, but he didn't mean it. It's okay. He didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, man, thanks so much for joining me and talking to me. I hope we have more conversations like this in the future. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Ooh. Can I say a thing? Oh, yeah. Say a thing. Catch me on the socials. That's Instagram and Twitter at Xavier Woods PhD. And remember, twitch.tv slash Austin Creed. And check me out on YouTube, up, up, down, down. And check out the podcast, the New Day podcast, every Monday. Search wherever you listen to your podcast. Type in the New Day. Click the pink picture with the three black guys' faces on it. Thank you very much for having me. Follow me on socials, please. Thanks. Bye. Do all that, guys. And be good people. <laughs> <laughs>